Back on Night Talk. You know, I, I like this pen. This is, uh, this, this is one of my favorite pens. It's a ballpoint. I also have uh, fountain pens, too. Why do I like this pen? Because um, it feels good in my hand. I like the way it writes. But there's probably something else about this pen that I'm not even aware of that caught my eye. And everyday objects have something about them that catches our eye. So you can judge a book by its color cover. In fact, we do. We judge people all the time by the way they dress and by the way they look. So that's why it's important, as, they, as your mom probably told you, put your best foot forward and dress well for an interview, for example. Uh, but what is going on in our brains? That is what we're going to talk about right now. Sophie Lebrecht from Carnegie Mellon University is with us right now. She's a postdoctoral fellow at Center for the Neural Basis of Cognition at CMU. What the is that first of all welcome to night talk <laughs> thanks mike okay where'd you get that accent is that from uh, Walmart, maybe? <laughs> no i grew up in london in london okay but i came to the states to study and i i did my phd at brown in rhode island and now i'm a researcher at carnegie mellon okay and, and you you just started a, a new company called neon labs yeah so uh, Neon Labs is a company that is founded on the technology that I developed during my PhD work. Okay, and, and my description, of the, I, I said I like this pen, and uh, there are a number of reasons that, that I you know, intellectually know I like this pen, but there's something more visceral, right. and I don't know what it is, but uh, is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. So we, there's something that we like to call valence, which really is how much you like or dislike something, but it's totally unconscious, and it's really coded in the brain right at the stage of seeing the object. So it's not a case that you see the object, you recognize it's a pen, and then you say, oh, I like this pen. Actually, even by the time you've recognized that it's a pen, your visual system has decided you've how much you like it. You've already decided whether you like it or not. And, and that could be true for cars, for jewelry, for, for Literally clothing? Literally, for any information that's coming into your visual system, you're evaluating its valence. Well, okay, and, and why do we do that? And how did you discover that we do that? Oh, so why we do it, I think, actually goes right back to evolution. So we need to be looking around. You were just chatting about guns and blood and, you know, we need to be aware of that. And so how do we know that a gun is coming into our visual field and it's bad? We know because we're constantly evaluating visual information for how positive or negative it is. So that we're prepared in that case that someone comes running in with a gun, our brain is ready. So to this run goes away. back to, to, to caveman days when we had to be worried about uh, predators, wild animals, other tribes. Exactly. Gangs of nomads. And, exactly. Is, is that, it, it really, I mean, that's what it is? I think so. I think it's coming from, you know, so maybe back as a caveman, you're looking for for that positive mate that, that who's going to protect you. The brain mechanisms now feed right down to that positive purse when you're in Nordstrom. It's the same, I think, neural mechanisms. So we're more instinctual, like animals are, than we would like to believe. Yeah, so there's two systems really operating all the time in the brain. So one is this very fast, very early instinctual system. And then there's the much higher level logical system. So we are smart and thoughtful, much more so than animals. But at the same time, we're also processing a lot of information very fast that for the most part, it's not relevant. So we ignore it. So we could evaluate, I could evaluate this cup but it's only relevant to me as and when I decide I want to pick it up and have a drink. Okay. But, 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 you've, but you've already noticed the cup, at mm -hmm. least subconsciously. Yeah. And you've you're... already made an evaluation of that cup. Totally. I mean, okay. your visual system is going all the time. And the moment you walked into our studio, you made an evaluation of me. Do you, do you have any idea what it might have been? Oh, very positive <laughs> <laughs> but, but but this I mean this could be this is of great value then of course to to companies to advertisers right yeah so this is actually I mean I'm really a, a scientist I, I my training was in neuroscience and I finished my PhD and typically the course is you know you, you just continue on your research path and I really stopped and thought 
wait, actually, this is useful to people. So to be able to say, here's some visual information, we can't talk about it, but we know it's going to affect behavior, whether it's buying or whether it's clicking on something. And so to be able to understand how the brain makes that link, I thought, maybe this is something of value and so that's what started our journey into talking to customers and figuring out from the people who would use this how would you how would you use this well, oh, okay and so do you, i mean do you have some clients already who are, are very interested in this can you talk about them yeah so i mean maybe i should tell you so the journey really started once i the the basic research was funded by the national science foundation and at the moment the national science foundation has a new project called Innovation Core. And Innovation Core is really to help scientists just like me who have some new innovative science that they want to get out there but have no idea how to do it. And so it's a, it's a, a six-week course taught by venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. And the whole thing is to get out and talk to customers and learn from them how they would use your technology. Okay, well, so, so I want to talk about the differences between the way it's done right now, typically, uh, because uh, since I'm part of the broadcasting industry and I know mm -hmm. a little bit about advertising and how, how that happens, and, uh, and so-called focus groups, because we deal with them as well, in, in broadcasting, that's kind of how it's done right now. Uh, and, and but what you're suggesting seems, in in, in some ways, more nebulous. Mm. Uh, and, and that's why I'm kind of curious about that. So so now, if we, uh, you know, let's take a uh, take take a product, mm -hmm. and you you'll get a focus group together, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're very much aware of this. I'm, yeah. I just want to lay this out. So this focus group, this group of people, this demographic, presumably demographically diverse group, mm -hmm. will sit there and evaluate the product. And then somebody will come in and they'll ask questions that they hope will reveal the real desires of these people. Do they really like this product? Or if they don't like it, why don't they like it? And how can we fix it? Mm -hmm. So how does your, re that's how they do it now. Right. Generally. So how does your research differ? So Take the same product and tell me how you deal with it. So, one, I guess one way to make this more understandable is think about when that product goes to market, how do people purchase it? So, if people sit around in the supermarket and think, okay, um, let me use my logic, what do I like, let me consciously evaluate everything and think it through, a focus group would be great at predicting behavior. But the reality is that's not how we shop. You know, we run in after work, we're on our cell phone, we're thinking about a million other things, we get to the pasta aisle, we just grab something quick. And so what that grab is relying on is this automatic gut preference or valence. Wait a minute, so, so if I'm in a, if I'm in a, a, a shop shopping aisle in a grocery store and I want to I want to buy cereal mm -hmm. okay so you're saying that I'm, I'm gonna make a, a snap decision at that moment which one to buy so all else being equal so if you um, if you were like I want a cereal with nuts and raisins in it and now you've got five roughly equally priced cereals with nuts and raisins if you relied on logic you would be there forever you know reading how do you make that decision well we don't have time to evaluate like that we just need to grab and go and so when everything is roughly the same this is when valence really plays a big role because it breaks that loop okay but I, I still have some questions about that because I'm still wondering about <laughs> how advertising factors into that tell you what why, why don't we take a little break here and we will continue uh, more on this what is it called again valence valence the, the valence it's basically we're just dumb animals and we just respond to stuff for some reason we don't know really know why we're going to try to find out next when we continue on night talk Back on night talk, I can see as soon as my face popped on the screen, you had a you had a visceral reaction. You just wanted to throw something at me, right? And you can't help yourself because we're just wired that way, apparently, as uh, human beings. Uh, at least that's what that's what Sophie Lebrecht has, has found out uh, in her work at Carnegie Mellon University in forming Neon Labs. Uh, so okay, so so we were in the we were in the grocery aisle, <laughs> all right, and we're talking about the cereal. So I, I've I've settled. I want the raisins and nuts, and I've got maybe three or four brands. 
<laughs> that have the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, well, how, you know, so you're in a hurry, you want to pick one. You can't sit there and evaluate them because it'll take you forever. You make a decision. But doesn't advertising factor into that? So, you, you know, advertising for a certain brand, Post Cereals, for example, might be in my head. So mm -hmm. I, I might grab that one. Does, it, doesn't that affect it more than what you're saying, these, these neural unconscious responses? Yeah, well, it, everything comes together. So the neural sort of responses that we talk about as a valence, that comes both from the perceptual information, but also from our experience with, with the world and, and advertising is part of that. But I think what's interesting is that we started, and like you, my first initial thought was, okay, we can take visual information and we can predict behavior. So let's start with package design. And then through the i program, where we're asked to get out and speak with customers, um, I got a call from a customer that had nothing to do with package design. And they invited me to meet with them. And I was like, well, they're a cool company. So even though it has nothing to do with package design, I'm going to go. And that customer was YouTube, and they handed us a really big problem. And that is, how can they keep their users clicking on videos? And how they do it right now is, I don't know if you've watched um, a video on YouTube, let's say you watch a Steeler section, and then, whoa, nine other Steeler sections pop up, nine other Steeler videos pop up right, for, exactly. you to, for you to choose yeah, from. Usually along the right-hand side of the thing, or, or even as the video ends, it's right there on the little screen. Uh, right. And it offers you these various... So how do... So, you're so, so basically, so they're providing that, but if the valence of that tiny little screenshot, which we call the thumbnail, if that doesn't engage you and automatically get you to click, all their work that they've done in generating a prediction for what you'd be interested in is worthless because what you really need is the user to click on the thumbnail. And what we're doing is saying, okay, how can we take our understanding of how the brain sees the world and how it creates preferences to help companies like YouTube, Hulu, ESPN, anybody putting video content online, how can we help them get their users to click well, on it? Okay, so, so those thumbnails pop up, and I couldn't honestly tell you necessarily what makes, and I, and I do, I mean, I'll, I'll look at one, because I've looked for something specific, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. so I find that. And then I notice on the right-hand side, there's, there's a whole list related videos, right? Right. And, and some of them are more related than others, right? <laughs> I mean, you know that too. And I couldn't actually tell you in some cases why I click on one and not another. Sometimes it is very deliberate. I look at what, what's the description, what's the thumbnail description. Mm -hmm. I, might, mm -hmm. I might pick it for that reason because I'm actually reading it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just pick it because there's something in that little thumbnail, some screenshot. Yeah. Okay, but okay so what, what, have you been able to determine what it is that I'm seeing that I'm relating to and, and, and you know, snap decision, I'm going to click on that? Yes. So, and that's a perfect description, okay. right? And this is also why, in some ways, our technology is better suited to this problem. Because why is it, you know, we're clicking on videos all the time. Like, videos are everywhere. They're all over the internet. Now they're on mobile. It's, and what is that gut decision? And what we would say is that's valence. Okay, and now, it's valence, but what, what you're saying is what is valence? What is it that I'm seeing? That right. What is it about this thumbnail that is making me want to click on that and not this one. Right. So what we want to say, or what I think you are you want me to say, is there's a particular list of features that yes. if a thumbnail has I'm, I'm this... I'm looking for certainty yeah, here, yes. That's what everybody wants. You know, you want to be able to say, well, if a thumbnail has the color red and this curve in it, then we're going to click on it. But the brain is so much more complicated than that, you know. And basically what valence is, you can think about as kind of a gist or an essence. So there are particular perceptual things. You you know, we like chrome, we like curves, but it's also how these things come together and, I mean, it's kind of hard to understand because the brain is just so complicated but, and it's processing this all, integrating okay. they, they, it. They tell me i got to take a break here. I, I want to pursue this for just a moment. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be difficult with you, but I'm finding it difficult to understand what it is that 
what I'm supposed to, that I'm looking for, what it is that I'm reacting to, and how a company like YouTube can create that you know, more times, out, nine times out of 10, instead of six times out of 10 or five times out of 10. So that is coming up. Well, I'll ask that question and uh, get some answers coming up next when we continue on Night Talk. All right, back on Night Talk, and we're talking about this uh, this instinctual reaction to things. Okay, so so on YouTube, this client of yours, the, the thumbnail is gonna attract me in some way, shape, or form. And I and I buy that. I buy that there's something about the thumbnail that I instinctually react to. But your work is going to be of no value to YouTube if you can't tell me how you know what what which thumbnail to pick to, to attract. Okay, so what? How do you do that? So what we would do is, and not just for YouTube, for any Anybody. company who's putting video content online, but basically we would take the stream of video and sort through that, first of all, for what's representative, so we make sure we're capturing something representative right. about the video, and then we sort it through our brain-based model, which can say, okay, what are... Uh, what is it that's going to make people click on it? We don't have to define it in terms of a list of features, but what it will spit out is what is the most visually appealing thumbnail from that stream of video that's going to maximize your users to click on that video more it, often. Is it, is it mostly color? Is it mostly shape? Or, or, or is it just a It's comment? a complete integration mm -hmm. of... Can this apply to online ads that are not videos? Yes. So in the sense, I mean, we're starting with the Neon Labs is starting with video content produced right. by publishers. But in a sense, there's no limit to this. It could be the ads that people put online. It could be the way that Amazon and eBay represent their products. It's really about how do you control the visual information that you want someone to click on? Isn't this, doesn't this, I have 30 seconds here, doesn't this smack of mind control here, ultimately? Big Brother's gonna somehow give, brainwash you? No, because it's really about, I think about it, how do we create a world that's visually pleasing and that's beautiful and that we want to click well, on? Well, I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish they'd do something about some of these some of these websites because they're anything but visually pl pleasing. Uh, well, that, it, Sophie, it's absolutely fascinating. And, and your new company, I wish you great success. You're working with YouTube. I mean, that's what, you know, well, what a great client. They're uh, not, I mean, they're not, we're... Uh, okay, but, but you're talking to them, right? Yeah. All right, Sophie Lebrecht, thank you so much for joining us today on Night Talk. All right, thanks and for having me. thank you for watching Night Talk. I'm Mike Pinsack from KDK Radio. Check me out tomorrow afternoon from noon to 3 on KDKA.